to be seated this morning. For those of you who I have yet to meet, I am Michaela Kovacic. I am the newly hired director of Christian Education and Worship Arts here at Thoburn. It's, it is my privilege to be on the staff here and to serve, serve God in the St. Clairsville community. So if we have not met uh, please, let's, let's uh, get to know one another as I settle into my, my role here. And now as we turn to God's word, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Today's scripture passage comes from the Gospel of Matthew. We are in, uh, I, I heard that you heard this text before. I, I think maybe Pastor Tom preached it a few weeks ago when it came up in the lectionary. Um, but know that if you're hearing it today, it is just that important to hear again. So we are in the, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 20. I invite you now to hear the word of the Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of those other prophets. And Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of the Lord. In August, before I started my position here, I, I went on a, a little bit of a family vacation. Now, this vacation uh, was different this year. Normally, friends and, and extended family would join us on our trip. Uh, but this year, with, with an upcoming wedding and some other life changes, it was just my immediate family. It was just my inner circle that went on this trip. And, and it was interesting, the dynamic, when it's just those people that are closest to you. You know, you can kind of talk about things that maybe when you're with other people, you can't let the family secrets slip out, you know. You can't let all the embarrassing stuff from junior high creep into your conversation. Do you ever have times in your life where you're just with your extended family and you get to have these really fascinating conversations that when other people are around, they're just off limits? Well, that's kind of where we find our gospel lesson. Jesus is looking for some alone time with his disciples so that they can have this conversation about Jesus' identity that otherwise was off limits. We know that uh, Jesus takes the disciples to an area called uh, Caesarea Philippi, which is about 20 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. Presumably, uh, Jesus takes the disciples there because of the crowd that has gathered around him at the Sea of Galilee trying to figure out who he is. And it got to be too much and too overwhelming, and they needed some alone time to have these conversations. So when they get to Caesarea Philippi, Jesus doesn't waste any time. His first question to them is, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And clearly the disciples are perplexed because they don't have a very good answer. They say, well, you know, some say John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. Let me paraphrase that. They don't know. They don't know. They don't have a very good answer. And then Jesus turns around and asks them an even more challenging question. He says, who do you say? that I am. 
And Simon Peter, the brave disciple in this passage, answers, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now, Peter's answer to Jesus' question is a defining moment in the gospel narrative. Before we hear Peter's testimony that Jesus is the Messiah, we have not yet heard anyone proclaim the identity of Jesus. This is that turning point where things start to change for the disciples and for Jesus. And so Jesus responds to Peter saying, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You Basically, this is divine revelation. You couldn't have come to this on your own, Peter. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, this might sound like Peter got a job promotion. No longer is he just the disciple, but now he gets to have the whole church built on him. But friends, rest assured that this is not a job promotion nor a celebration of the accomplishments of Peter as the disciple. Peter was not a standout among the rest. And in fact, we know how the story ends So we know by the end of the gospel narrative, it's Peter that will have denied Jesus not once, but three times. Here, Jesus isn't responding to the person that Peter is, but responding to the testimony, the statement of faith, the identity statement that Peter provides. When he says, you are the Messiah, Peter is saying, What I have experienced in you, Jesus, is that you are the Messiah. You're the one that's been sent to us as a gateway into the kingdom of God. Friends, Jesus asks the same question to each of us. Who do you say that I am? He asks us, what is your testimony of me? What is your experience of the living God through my witness and presence? When Jesus asks this question to the disciples and to us, he's calling us out. Now, sometimes being called out is not a good thing. Sometimes being called out is embarrassing, right? Who here has been called out and been embarrassed? Not pleasant, right? Sometimes getting called out leads to an altercation, maybe with a friend or even with a spouse. You call them out on their behavior. But here, it's a good thing. Jesus is calling each and every one of us out to be in service and ministry to the world, proclaiming the same testimony that Peter provided some 2,000 years ago, saying, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. The word for church that is used later in this passage when Jesus says, Uh, Peter, on you I will build my church, comes from the Greek word ecclesia. Now, in the Greek, it means more than just church. Ecclesia refers to a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into an assembly. And if you continue to study the word ecclesia, you'll find out that those who get called out are not a select few, They're not a group of friends or a social club, but rather it is everyone in that area, every single person, man, woman, child, all called out to live together in a new identity, in a new assembly called an ecclesia. Friends, Jesus is calling us out. Do you hear his voice? Jesus has called each and every one of us out of our homes and out of our comfort zones to follow him on the road of discipleship. You and I have been called out to share our testimony of who Jesus is and what he has done in our lives. We are being called out into mission and ministry. 
You see, once we make the statement that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, we are never the same. Our lives are reshaped. Our community is forever changed by our statement of faith. But friends, hear this. We are not being called to build a church. Jesus is building the church. You and I are being called out to continue the ministry in which Jesus has begun. And know this. You are not too old or too young, too rich or too poor, too smart or not smart enough to be in ministry and mission to our world. David C. Hockett writes, when we make this confession that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, we are saying that we want our lives, our witness, and our ministry to be defined by Christ's life, witness, and ministry. Following Jesus and modeling our lives after him often leads us to places we'd rather not go and calls us to do things we'd rather not do. You see, that's the hard road of discipleship that being called out puts us on. Now, for some of you, maybe this leaving of your comfort zone is, I don't know, volunteering in the nursery, not that that's a shameless plug or anything. Or maybe it's joining a Simply Christian Bible study group that's starting next week. Or maybe that's one of the other ministries and mission places, or works that this church offer. For some of us, maybe it's a call to licensed or ordained ministry. For some, maybe it's teaching Sunday school. For some, maybe it's a mission trip overseas. The list goes on and on, but Jesus is still calling. I'm reminded of John Wesley, the founder of our Methodist heritage, who, after being ordained, received job offers to two very different positions. The first position was a stable position in a church, uh, in fact, in a church that he had grown up in, uh, one that was in a, a fairly affluent neighborhood that had all the creature comforts that we often require. And the second position was to be a missionary far from home in Georgia in what would become the United States of America. This position meant that he would be far from home and in an undeveloped land where obviously creature comforts were not going to be had. While Wesley knew that his ministry there would be difficult, he felt God calling him out to be the hands and feet of Christ to a world that needed to hear and to see and experience Jesus as the Messiah, Jesus as the Son of the living God. It was a hard road of discipleship for Wesley following Jesus. He did go to Georgia, and it was hard. But later he would reflect that it was here in that place, in that space, that he gained the skills that he needed to return to England to lead the Methodist movement. We know the disciples themselves would face a hard road of discipleship. Following Jesus' death and resurrection, the disciples faced persecution and fear as they fled with nowhere being safe. But friends, hear this good news. Christ is with us. Just as he remained with the disciples, Christ continues to dwell with us, the church, the ecclesia, 
as we are being called out to join in ministry and mission and to engage this journey of discipleship that's going to lead to places we could never imagine. Jesus is with us. I love how David C. Hockett puts it. Who do you say that I am? This is the heart of the matter for us as the church. How we answer this question with our lips and with our lives defines the shape of our life together. This confession is not our possession. It is not the result of our cleverness or the fruit of our brilliant deduction. It demands our heart, our mind, our body, and our soul. It leads to the cross and to giving of ourselves sacrificially for God and for neighbor. But it is also the way that leads to life. Jesus is calling us out. Do you hear his voice? You and I have been called at this time and this place into this ecclesia, this church, this assembly. We have been called to be the hands and feet of Christ to a world that desperately needs our testimony. And so, if our life together is truly defined by the question, who do you say that I am? We've got work to do, friends. If we respond to this question affirming that Jesus is our Messiah, the Son of the living God, then we've got work to do. We've got work to do to continue to share the testimony of who Jesus is and what he has done in our lives. We've got work to do to keep on listening for Jesus' call. We've got work to do in our church, in our community, in our world, as we keep on in ministry. We've got work to do on this journey together in assembly. But friends, this is the way that leads to life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.